Welcome back. Today I wanted to print this rocket launcher toy by Nakuzen. I like that it's a print in place and the ammunition is separate, but the actual gun is just one piece. No supports are needed. So I really wanted to see if I could print this on the Prusa XL. There's a few suggestions in the details, so I go into Prusa Slicer and make those adjustments. I started with a 0.2 layer height in the detail. I figured with the nozzle size that should probably work. So then I went in and changed the perimeter walls from 2 to 3 as he suggested. Then I jumped over to the speed and I changed the perimeters down from 50 to 40 and then the external perimeters from 35 down to 25. I kept my infill at 20% with the gyroid just the default and then I did an aligned seam. So after aligning the print and then slicing it, it'll be just a little over two hours for this print. So I get this started and I just go with a PLA, the Overture brand in the Silk Silver. I thought that would look pretty for this. The print starts off pretty good, but it does not make it all the way through. Right there, it falls over and starts printing into space. I go back into Prusa Slicer and I look at right where it failed and I don't see anything odd. So I decide to change the profile and I have printed a lot of things with the 0.32 layer height in the speed. So that's what I jump to. I keep all of the other settings the same. I transfer them for the speed. Um, so it's still going to be a little bit slower, but I want to just see if maybe it just needs to print a little bit faster. This print is an hour and 14 minutes, so let's see how this one turns out. This one also starts off good, but it does not even make it as far. This one doesn't completely fall over, but it just gets stuck to the nozzle and kind of just makes a mess. It definitely has the potential to have turned into a blob, but I do catch it before it gets too bad. And I'm able to stop the print, heat it up a little bit, and back to normal. I go back into Prusa Slicer and decide to go with a finer layer height since the other print did worse at a taller layer height. Let's go with a smaller one. So I jump to the 0.15 detail. Again, I keep all of the speed settings the same. I do transfer all of those things over. And with this layer height, I am at two hours, almost three hours. I also add a brim in the slicer to help it not fall over and hopefully have a little better adhesion to the bed. This one also starts off good and makes it about as far as the last one. And then again gets kind of stuck on the nozzle and starts printing, starts turning into a mess. I don't catch this one and it just kind of turns into a spaghetti monster. This is how the .15 turned out. You can see the little bit of the brim didn't get very far and then the point three two that turned into kind of a blob they yeah they pretty much got to about the same point so i go back to printables and i download the file that has a brim already attached i think well maybe he's made one that's a little bit sturdier and maybe that'll be the trick I print this one at 0.2 layer height because that seemed to be the best one so far and starts off good. I'm very hopeful for this one, but no, it kind of snaps the brim in half and is loses its adhesion. This isn't going to work. And it doesn't even make it as far as the fir very first print. So I start thinking it's probably the nozzle size on the XL. I could swap it out to a 0.4, but I'm getting a little bit frustrated that it's not working. So I swap printers and I go from the Prusa XL to the MK4, the Mark IV. I have the brim. I added another brim. I have it at the 0.15 quality layer height and I kept all of the slower speed settings as well. This is going to take a little over three hours. I did not do input shaping. I just did the regular layer height without input shaping because I was thinking probably the input shaping would be too fast for it. 
I also swapped to a different color PLA. This is just black, no silk, and I thought maybe that would help a little bit too. But no, it also loses adhesion and just kind of starts printing in space. It gets farther than the other one though. But that blob on top is not going to work. Then I come across the Prusa Summer update on the blog. And under input shaping, I read that it's not just to make the printer go faster, but it helps reduce ringing and also helps cancel resonance vibrations. So I start thinking, well, maybe I should try that again with the input shaping this time on the MK4 Mark IV. I don't transfer any of the speed adjustments, so I'm just going with the default input shaper so it does swap it to a 0.2 layer height. And this one is gonna take just a little bit over an hour. It makes it pretty far, but not all the way. And the speed of the slicer kind of bounces it around a little bit. I go back through the printables and I see that lots of people have made this successfully. So I decide I'm gonna swap it from the Mark IV to the Mark III and see if maybe the little bit slower speed of this printer is gonna do the trick. So I swap it over and I realign it. I keep it at the 0.15 layer height and I kept those earlier speed adjustment settings that I did in the very beginning, including the three wall perimeter. This one is going to take a little over three hours and I run it on my MK3S and I change it to the Prusa Mint Galaxy Black so that I'll be able to keep all of these different prints separate. And this one finishes, you guys. It is completely done. I'm honestly kind of surprised. I didn't think that this was gonna be the trick, but here it is. It turned out really beautiful. Not a lot of stringing. It looks good all the way through. I don't see anything crazy with the seam either. And the brim stayed attached really well. The spring works great. I'm able to completely put it into position and snap it. Okay, now we just gotta print the ammunition. The notes said to print lots of these cause they get lost very easily. So I try to print six at once on my first go and they don't stay adhered to the bed. So I go back and just start printing a few singles and those ones work good. I really like this one that is shaped like a nozzle and it does even have the 0.4 on the side. Obviously it's scaled up quite a bit more than a regular nozzle, but I think it looks really cool. So I really would like to print more at once, so I jump back to the Mark IV and try to print four all in one go, and that does not work out again. But by itself, these ones print fine, and they turn out really smooth. They're really pretty. Okay, so let's compare these together. The one on the left was printed with the Mark III, and the one on the right was printed with the Mark IV. I noticed the seam on the left with the Mark III kind of has a little bit of a curve, and on the one on the right, it's a very straight seam. The opening on the left, the Mark III, looks a little bit cleaner. I feel like there's a tiny bit more ghosting on the Mark III on the left, but it's very minimal. The numbers are pretty easy to read, and I don't see any ghosting that continues onto those other panels or the other sides. I, I don't see any indents or lines or ringing on either one. I do see a little bit less smooth right there on the Mark III. On the Mark IV, it's just a little bit smoother on the underside of that nozzle. They both look pretty good underneath. So I'm happy with both of these. So the real question about this print is will it shoot the ammunition and how easy is it to use? So it seems like it goes about 10 feet or so. The only thing I wish is that these ammunition fit and kind of snap in a little bit. Sometimes I would drop them. But every single time that I loaded it, it worked. I did not have anything break on me. And they all seem to shoot about the same length. It's really a pretty cool print. Let me know your thoughts. Would you print this? Thanks for watching.